beauty of showing up without a plan is you can adjust it. And I really love this theme we have going, poetry changing your life. And uh, yeah, it, it can, it does. So, so you know, people ask about how did you become a poet, as our new friend was asking us earlier, and how did you become poet laureate and all that. It just happens. I didn't start calling myself a poet until other people started calling me one. And I just thought it sounded kind of cool because it's kind of subversive to be a poet because nobody really goes into poetry thinking that one day I'm going to drive a Lamborghini as the one poet read us earlier and, and all of that stuff. So I just wrote a book. And when it came out, people started calling me a poet. And it changed my life because that book, you know, I figured there's one sentence journal, the one that you all got copies of. When that book came out, I figured there'd be like 50 copies in the world before it even would be stashed in my mom's closet somewhere. <laughs> but it connected with people somehow. And that book came out on August 14th, 2018. And it was August 14th, 2023, that I got a call from the governor saying that he had selected me as the next Montana Poet Laureate. And that, to the date, coincidence is proof that there are no coincidences in the world. It just it just sometimes stuff just happens the way it's supposed to happen. And I still, you know, that book is kind of the foundation for what my life is now. And while there are other books, that is the one that is always gonna be the one that allowed me to be here in front of you all in the first place. The second big coincidence that comes with poetry, I can incorporate my relative Aaron Parrott talking about being a printer. Because when I got Poet Laureate, there's a class at the university who said, hey, will you uh, give us some of your poems and so that we can practice making broadsides? And Aaron knows, I was like, hell yeah! The more broadsides, the better. So of all the poems that I gave them to, to practice with was this one that, at the time that I wrote it, I did not write it for my father, but there was one event a couple years ago that I was doing it was on November 10th, 2022. November 10th is my father's birthday. He passed away in 2014. For whatever reason, as I was about to read this poem, I just felt the spirit of my father with me. And I think it's because the Chevrolet that is referenced in this poem, I was thinking about the one that I inherited from him and drove for a couple weeks, and then in true family tradition, it joined my truck, broke down in my driveway. <laughs> and so ever since I read it that night, it's kind of felt like his poem. So when I got Poet Laureate, it was in August, and then I had all kinds of stuff going on, and it wasn't until November that we were able to do a big celebration at the library in Missoula to celebrate my Poet Laureate ship. And of those poems that I submitted to this class doing the, the letter press, they selected this poem as the one that they were gonna do a broadside with. And there was art showing the undercarriage of this Chevrolet. And it just so happened that the night of that event was also November 10th, my father's birthday. Mm -hmm. So all of those things going on in the universe conspiring to bring him to my celebration on his birthday was profound for me. So that is a poem I'm going to read for you before we announce the big winners, I guess, is what's next. This poem is called Common. I'm overly emotional because of today, just this We've spent the whole day celebrating poetry, and when does that happen, right? Yeah, let's, let's celebrate that. Let's put our hands together. <laughs> Just the skill that you guys presented to us and the attention that everybody has given you, I, I'm very deeply moved by that. So, miigwech, thank you. Comment. Blaze through your meager time on earth. Like a gigantic rock firing through space at an unimaginable distance from where you slide behind the wheel 
of an iron-plated old Chevrolet, gravel tail arcing behind you as your tires, attached to rims, attached to axle, attached to drivetrain, attached to a few decades of classic Detroit engineering blast you away from all of your pain and frustration like a rocket into an entirely different universe of troubles. The kinetic energy of all those horses under the hood vibrating the flesh of your legs and your belly and you can't help but grin in spite of every little thing wrong with your world. Not sure where you're headed, but you'll know when you get there, even if it's a crash of impact and a whomp of fireball that sent your final prayers into the sky. as tiny little fortunes scrawled on pieces of smoldering ash.